guys, Mrs. Quinn back with another lesson on immigration. I really hope that you guys are liking this and making some connections. Um, as we go through more lessons, you'll see that um, immigration is kind of the backbone to the United States. Okay? All right, I'm going to start with some vocabulary words, and then I will move on to reading, and then I will ask the questions. Okay? Are you ready to actively be listening and learning? All right, here we go. Vocab number one, center. A place where a particular activity or work is done. Here's an example. Manuel, Manuel made a picture frame for his mother at the art center. Number two, interpreter. A person who turns speech from one language into another language. Here's an example. The interpreter that works at the doctor's office translates English into Spanish for families who don't speak English. Number three, liberty. Freedom. Here's an example. Colonists in the American Revolution fought for their liberty so they would no longer be ruled by the English king. And opportunity. A chance, possibility. Here is an example. Jaden was very grateful for the opportunity to go to science camp over the summer and learn more about his favorite subject. Okay, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and get started reading. Okay, actively listening and learning, right? Okay, here we go. Look, there she is. With cries of excitement, the ship's passengers rushed to the railing. It was the summer of 1889 when this ship of European immigrants made its way to New York Harbor. In the distance stood, stood the sight they had dreamed of seeing, the Statue of Liberty, a symbol of freedom and hope welcoming them to their new home in the United States of America. I'm going to pause for just a second. This is a real picture of Lady Liberty, the Statue of Liberty. Pretty amazing, huh? Okay, I'm going to keep going. There were many push and pull factors that led many people to come to America. Some wanted to own their own farms or businesses and knew that there was a greater chance of doing that in America than they could in their old countries. Others came from poor places where finding food or shelter had been a desperate daily struggle. They hoped that if they worked hard in this new place that they and their families could be sure of warm meals and a suitable place to take shelter and call home. Oh, that's definitely push factors, huh? Among the passengers was a man from Germany who, although an adult, stood only four feet tall and whose body, instead of growing straight, seemed to bend to one side. His name was Charles Steinmetz, and he was a mathematician, or an expert in math, and an engineer, a person trained to design and build machines, bridges, and buildings. He had left his home in Germany for two reasons. The first one, he had trouble finding work in his homeland because he looked different. Many people did not understand that a powerful powerful mind and a kind heart lay inside Charles's body. Second, Charles had written an article that said his nation's government was to blame for many problems. In many countries, writing such an article could land a person in trouble. One day, a friend warned Charles, my brother who works for the government says that the police are going to arrest you and put you in jail. Ooh, those are two good push factors, huh? To avoid being sent to jail, 
Charles fled over the Alps, a large mountain range in Europe, to Switzerland. There, a friend of his named, Oscar, gave him a place to stay. Over dinner one night, Oscar said, I am moving to America, Charles. Come with me. There, you can find work and be free to write or say whatever you think. Well, that would be pool factors, wouldn't it? If only I could, Charles sighed. I cannot afford to buy a ticket. Oscar smiled. My uncle moved to America and made a fortune. He is paying for my ticket. I wrote to him, and he has offered to pay for yours, too. Now, less than two months later, Charles and Oscar, along with many other European immigrants, were sailing into New York Harbor on the east coast of the United States. Charles was too short to see over the heads of the other passengers, but Oscar cleared a path for him through the crowd. A minute later, the two friends stood at the railing, staring up at the statue whose lamp lit the way toward the new homeland. Beyond the Statue of Liberty, on its island in New York Harbor, was another island called Ellis Island. There were enormous buildings and docks on this island where ships could anchor and unload passengers. Charles thought, that is Ellis Island. That is where the American government decides who gets to enter the country and who might be turned away. I know that only a few people are turned away. Those who are dangerous, sick, or do not have the paper saying they can move to a new country. Will they let me in after my trouble back home? Will they look at the way my body bends to one side and say I am too small and weak to be welcomed in America? Hours later, Charles stood in a huge room in a building called the Immigration Center. Long, ago, long lines of immigrants waited to approach a row of desks. This is where government clerks would ask questions to determine whether the travelers would be allowed to enter the United States. In another part of the building, doctors waited to examine the immigrants. Most people were allowed in, but Charles was worried. What will I do if they turn me away? I cannot return home. If I do, I will be sent to jail. Finally, he reached the head of the line. A government clerk asked him a question, but Charles did not understand English. The clerk called over an interpreter who knew many languages, including German. Using the interpreter to turn his English words into German, the clerk asked, what is your name? Charles said his name and the clerk wrote it in a book. Then, without looking up, he asked, Do you have a job waiting here for you? No, Charles answered. Do you have any money to live on until you find a job? No, Charles admitted. Now, the clerk looked up at Charles and he shook his head. So you have no money? You speak very, you speak no English? I'm sorry, but we want people who can add something to our nation. Just then, Charles's friend Oscar stepped forward. If you turn this man away, he said, you will be making the greatest mistake of your life. This is Charles Steinmetz, one of the greatest scientific, scientific and mathemati mathematical thinkers in the world. He may be only four feet tall, but he has many talents. You want citizens who can improve this country? He can. I am so sure of it that I will pay all his expenses until he finds a job. Wow. Ooh, real picture of Charles. Real picture of Charles. Two hours later, Oscar's uncle welcomed Oscar and Charles to his big house in New York City. Soon afterward, Charles Steinmetz began to learn English. 
and he went to work at a large company using his powerful mind to invent useful new products. He helped improve the way electricity is carried through wires in order to bring electric power to buildings and houses. What? He brought lights and power into houses? Ooh. He helped to make electric street lights possible and worked with the famous American inventor Thomas Edison. Charles wrote books that helped other scientists understand electricity. He made more than 200 scientific discoveries. Wow. Real picture of him. These discoveries made Charles Steinmetz famous and earned him a great deal of money. But he never forgot how other people had helped him. While continuing his scientific work, Charles began teaching at a college near New York City. He refused to take any pay for his teaching. And he said, teaching others how to create useful inventions is the best way to repay the United States for taking me in. His friend Oscar understood. He explained in later years, like so many others, Steinmetz came to America so he could help others with his talents and also have a good job and life for himself. That is why they call the United States the land of opportunity. Like many other immigrants, the move to America gave Charles a new chance to achieve something. Oscar continued, I believe that each person brings something good to share. Putting all our talents together can make the United States and its citizens stronger and happier. But just think, that clerk at Ellis Island almost turned Charles Steinmetz away. Charles Steinmetz and his friend Oscar were two of the 23 million immigrants who came to the United States between the years of 1880 and 1920. The majority of these immigrants were from the European continent. Like Charles, these European immigrants sailed into New York Harbor and were registered into the United States Ellis Island. Sometimes immigrants' names were recorded and changed or shortened to make them easier to say. And sometimes, as almost, as almost happened to Charles, immigrants were turned away if they were too sick or did not have the right papers. Can you imagine what your life would be like today if Charles Steinmetz had been sent back to Germany? That's crazy, right? Okay, so before I get started on questions, I want to show you. This is a real picture of Ellis Island. The building is there. It's like a museum now. But the people, the immigrants on the boats, they would be on the water on the boat. And this is what they would see from far away. The Statue of Liberty. As they came closer and pulled into this harbor, they would come off and they would have to go into this building. And that's where they would stand in line and get asked questions and either allowed in or turned back. Okay. All right. Are you ready for questions? Okay, here we go. Question number one. What statue welcomed immigrants to the United States? Number two. In today's Read Aloud, you heard about Charles Steinmetz, a mathematician and an engineer. What were some of the push factors the author tells about that caused Charles to leave Germany? Okay, now, what were the pull factors that brought him to the United States? Next question. Where did Charles' ship dock in New York Harbor? I just showed you the picture. Next question. Why did the government clerk almost send Charles back to Europe? Another one. Why did Charles' friend Oscar call the United States the land of opportunity? And last one. 
what were some of the things Charles did to make the United States a better place? All right, guys, I hope that you enjoyed another listening and learning from me. Okay, I miss you guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.